not sleeping okay i probably should be saying namaskar which is greetings in bangla which is my native language my name is laboni jana and i work with intra health international in the india country office uh, before i begin i want to share a secret with you which is uh, when i knew that i was going to come to share point, uh, switch point and i was going to speak i started thinking what was the what is the cool thing i really do in my work generally i manage programs in india so the only cool thing i could really think of is one m health project i was managing for the last few years so i already pre decided that i was going to talk about that only whatever the topic given to me <laughs> so this is the topic i have where is the humanitarian design um so when i started thinking about this uh, intuitively i could understand because this is what probably we as health practitioners we have been doing for many many years but still i googled like anyone else to try and get a definition which would sort of suit me and this is the one which i liked most connecting the power of design to the people who need it most and the places where it can make a real and lasting difference so this one really resonated well with my thinking philosophy and experience as a health practitioner working in poor uh, places in india over the last 15 years so what i'm going to do today really is to talk about uh, this uh, m health experience m health application which we have been doing uh, in india for the last 3 years with frontline health workers and uh, i would like to really expand on this theme with a few of my thoughts so before doing that uh, before really uh, you know talking about what i think i would like you to watch a movie it's very short one a short video <laughs> with 56000 maternal and 900000 newborn deaths india accounts for 19% of all maternal and 29% of all newborn deaths globally accredited social health activist ashas india's cadre of community health workers could prevent a large number of these deaths by supporting women and their families to access skilled care at birth adopt healthy measures recognize maternal and neonatal danger signs and promptly seek care however existing paper based job aids such as text heavy reference materials difficult to carry counseling flip books complex newborn checklists and reporting formats hinder ashas to optimally contribute to improved maternal and newborn health outcomes in this context the manthan project funded by the bill and melinda gates foundation and led by intra health international developed and tested m sakhi m sakhi is an interactive vernacular audio video guided mobile application that provides support to ashas in conducting day to day activities <laughs> across the mother and child continuum of care m sakhi uniquely combines the functions of existing multiple paper based tools and provides ashas with critical maternal and newborn health information m sakhi not only helps ashas in managing and scheduling their home visits but also assists them in counseling and assessment auxiliary nurse midwives use em sakhi for real time monitoring of asha activities em sakhi's content is based on the national rural health mission training manuals and home based newborn care guidelines Let's see how M Sakhi works. An Asha registers a pregnant woman into M Sakhi. 
in case she is not comfortable writing, she can register a beneficiary by recording her name and tagging a photo. During the pregnancy, Asha counsels beneficiaries using multimedia messages. M. Saki helped Asha's prioritize messages as per the stage of pregnancy. Once the woman delivers, Asha captures the birth in M. Saki and it, in turn, generates a postnatal home visit schedule for Asha's. The schedule is again color coded for easy readability. A postnatal visit using M. Saki helps Asha counsel mother and families on home-based care, assess the newborn and mother for danger signs, classify sickness and provide treatment or referral as indicated. The ANM as well is informed of all key indicators for her Asha's on Right. Okay, this is a Asha worker. I think you've got the gist of it, what we are trying to do really. These Asha's is a very large cadre of community health workers working in all, all across India. There's about 800,000 Asha's working in India right now. And as you've seen in this uh, uh, short film, so traditionally these are the kind of tools, you know, the paper-based tools which they are given. And what we are seeing on ground is that they really are not using those tools for a variety of reasons. You saw some of that already. So um, while uh, thinking, you know, how really, how can we really design something which Asha's will actually use when they go and make home visits, when they do counseling. So uh, mobile application became kind of a natural choice for us for two reasons. One was um, that the place where we have been working with this Uttar Pradesh, one of the largest states in India, uh, it, the mobile penetration is now, like everywhere else, very, very high. 80% of Asha's have some kind of a mobile phone. So it seemed that it is a good idea, you know, to actually use the mobile platform. And the other thing, there's a lot of work which we have been hearing here since yesterday, you know, what exciting things are happening with mobile telephony. So a lot of work in India also is happening, but what we could not find was a scalable model. There are many, many pilots, but a scalable model is something which we still don't have. So what we did was, as IntraHealth International, which where you know we work with this, uh, you know, global theme of uh, making health workers present, ready, connected, and safe. So with this thinking, we got into a partnership with the government of Uttar Pradesh, where we work, with support for from uh, the Gates Foundation, and in a lot of collaboration with the frontline health workers themselves. Because we uh, realized that to do anything, this kind of new things, the first thing people started asking was, was what is this mobile thing you're going to use? Asha's have those basic phones. They can't even read, they can't write. Do you think they can actually use mobile phones? So we had to really get into a partnership where we get you know, the Asha's on board. So we thought of this process for a long time and then we kind of created a sort of a co user community, like you all have been talking. I'm not a techie, I'm not a geek. I'm basically a management person. I don't understand that language, but I do understand that end users have to be on board. And something like this is so novel, so new. So we got a group of 30 Ashas who we got with us as the user community who will actually help us develop this. And I think after two and a half years, three years, I think it really had paid off whatever we have done with mobile phones. And you have seen it is a fairly, uh, you know, it's a smartphone based application. We didn't start with a smartphone, not at all. We started with a basic keypad based uh, simple phone because that is what most health workers have. But we, and we developed, the first prototype we developed was actually a basic one. 
But working with them, we realized that the kind of problems they are facing, our basic phone actually was not the appropriate tool for them. You saw those complex checklists which they are supposed to be using while doing home visits and making newborn uh, identification, sick newborn identification. It was not possible on a basic phone to actually, you know, input everything and some of these ashas also can't read. So you only have the scroll up and down key which they could use. So we had to think of a more intuitive kind of an interface and smartphone was the thing we thought, you know, that something we could experiment with and see how it works with ashas. And I think after two years of working with smartphone, shifting from basic phone to smartphone, I think it really paid off. And so my basic point is that one of the design principles, which uh, I think is very important, which as an organization we really are le learning is that we have to think of the end user, we have to get them on board. We have to really design with. We don't know. We don't know the answer. So we really have to go and work with them to see what really works for them. And they have most of the answers, like since yesterday I've been hearing this, open source community. So it's almost like, you know, creating a frontline health workers community. So what if they don't, if they can't read or write, but they can call. We have our, you know, the designers who work with us, they are 24 into seven available. So they call at 12 midnight. I am using this, what will I do? It is not working. My phone has stopped. So I think the importance is you know, the, the creating that environment where it doesn't matter whether you, have, you, you are tech savvy or not, you can use it. Even semi-literate ashas are so good at actually giving solutions. So I think that is the first principle we learned in this uh, work. Second, of course, Again, we have to keep the design embedded within the local context, by which I mean, uh, you know, infrastructure, what is available technologically, as well as, let's say, for example, electricity. Half of these villages, 10 hours, there will be no electricity. So how would they charge the phones? No problem. They have their own solution. They have identified a grocery store where they go, pay 10 rupees and charge. So you have everything worked out. You don't have to worry about these things at all. That is what we learned. So if in fact at the end of six months only we realized that, well, this is something, it is there to stay. They are using it extremely well and they are really, really contributing. Uh, the third thing I think we learned was that uh, not only the user, the end user, but using and working with all stakeholders is really, really important. Like I said before, ours was really a partnership between ashas who were the end user the, the the broader community they were actually serving as well as you know people like their supervisors even the government officials because if you are really trying to create something you know which will actually last and be sustainable you have to get them on board otherwise you know you design something small and then go and talk to a a, a health official and say look this is a wonder thing and I have got these great results. It's not going to resonate with them at all because many people are doing it already. So I think the important lesson is really to get them on board right from day one. And I think we have been lucky as an organization that we had that kind of atmosphere in the state we are working in and there's a lot of support from the policy and the government actually wanted to create this prototype for them. It was not, IntraHealth really had a technical assistance role there. So what happened was, so we created really a larger ecosystem now within Uttar Pradesh. And uh, I'm very happy to say what we started only with 30 Asha as the first prototype. And we went on to the second phase where we worked with about 200 Ashas. Now is getting into the third phase of scale up, which is basically, and I'm very happy that I have Patty here with me, because with M Health Alliance and with other partners like Qualcomm and Government of Uttar Pradesh, we are now getting into scaling up this to all over UP in a phased manner. So next month, starting next month, I think onwards, we're going to actually get into this very exciting scale up phase. So let's see what we learn from the scale up phase also. Um, another thing I just wanted to touch upon is that 
we had a lot of uh, discussion you know when we were talking about whether to go from basic to a smartphone was like i think ken you were talking about you know what is available why don't you use them we really debated a lot about this you know amongst ourselves within the team as well as with the frontline workers with the government stakeholders who were with us and we realized that smartphone is coming you cannot stop it and the good thing is that you know what they really require you have seen how they are using the phone it's just not to for you know sending messages or just to read it's actually to counsel patients so you need a certain uh, you know size screen size to do that otherwise it's really very difficult they need objects which actually can move they can see a videos small video so so it's important that we have a certain size of screen and the good thing is that if you we started weighing the cost benefit and we saw that you know that the cost of mobile phones are coming down what we started off was a 200 dollar phone now it is available in 130 dollars so it's really we need to look at that and also because as i said there was a lot of government buy in the government actually is willing to invest they they actually would like to buy these mobile phones and give it to the ashas because they can see the what power technology has in the lives of a frontline health worker and lastly i think this is what will be like the mantra we have to keep it simple simple for the end user the back end might be as complex as it can get but for the end user it has to be really really simple and we realized that with the android platform when we moved there they felt it was simple it's touch they can do anything with that so for them that's the simplest thing they wanted they couldn't read so they wanted color so we just coded everything you know color coded so if there is a sick child it's red so they knew that red means i have to take this child to the hospital immediately so those kind of simple things we really have to build in and i think as a, a community which is growing i think these are some of the lessons i think each of us probably is learning uh finally i think i'm kind of reach the end of my uh, uh, uh talk uh i just wanted to end with this i last night i read heather's email and she had kind of you know given us this uh, <coughs> thing that what exactly we should be focusing on when we talk about humanitarian design and i really loved what she's written it's the way we and our organizations work to ensure that tools policies and programs are effective for the end user built for real situations with potential to scale and impact to make a difference in the world to me this really is the essence of humanitarian design and i think at intrahealth international where we champion health workers this is something you really would like to build upon and i know morin and others are working a lot on building this global community where we get end users together the frontline health workers and we engage them in this building of you know this kind of tools as a, as a continuum not just stop, stop with one prototype but how can we engage them in a longer term as we go from stage 1 to stage 2 to stage 3 because their needs are evolving and evolving and you really have to engage them thank you We saw something very special happen. A group of people came together who were all beginning to think about how to make M Health a reality. It was really a moment in time. There were a number of small-scale pilots happening in M Health, and when we brought together the leads who were at the cutting edge of M Health to Bellagio in 2008, there was really a strong consensus amongst all the participants that a new entity was needed to bring those groups together and help advocate for M Health at the global scale. We had to ensure that M Health would develop differently, more strategically and cohesively. Instead of a thousand ships, we needed a mothership. I think the unique role and the very special place uh, that we identified, and which Patty and her team have done a fabulous job in, is really in that convening space. The M Health example is a good one because it was so new. The use of mobiles was so evolutionary and revolutionary that it took a it took a collaborative. and an alliance to take on the issues that no one group could own 
but the whole community would benefit from. And I was really drawn to that ethos, that the desire to create something that could benefit many. The Alliance provided a neutral forum to advocate for end health in a way that was collaborative and also unclouded by individual or commercial interests. What the End Health Alliance has done most importantly is really added a lot of credibility to the end health space. Back in 2008 and 2009, there was a lot of skepticism about end health, whether end health could be used, whether end health could have impact on health outcomes. Now the questions are very different. It's no longer about should we do in health, it's much more about how do we best do mobile health. As I look back over the last five years, I really sense that the work of the Alliance has been catalytic in terms of driving forward uh, understanding, awareness and activity in this space. One of our greatest achievements as the M Health Alliance has been our catalytic work in the use of mobile technology to support maternal, newborn, and child health, and in moving the needle on MDGs 4 and 5. We're really starting to see M Health uh, become more and more part and parcel of the conversation on any global health issue. M Health is the future. We soon may not even call it M Health anymore, as its application has become so ubiquitous, it simply is and will be a part of modern healthcare practice going forward. We see the use on the ground, and we're seeing that countries themselves are building this into their country plans. That couldn't be more valuable and important, and I think it's the, it's the wave of the future. We've now created the opportunities and now we're seeing people take them up and make them real. For me, the next step in the Alliance to move from the global convening thought leadership role into focusing more on activities in country and in regions is absolutely the right step. The promise of M Health is really health for everyone, wherever they are. It's not sufficient that people have a mobile phone and it's not sufficient that people have an app. You need to make sure that the information and the systems are connected. And that's what the Health Alliance has worked to do and will continue to do in the future. So I think uh, in the interest of time, I think we've gone over our time. Um, what, I, what I'd love to um, just share from our experience as, as the Health Alliance um, is that as an organization that focuses on a collective impact, there's a whole new sort of type of movement that's now happening um, in uh, international development um, that's trying to take a meta look at how we approach uh, critical problems and really building the, the commons and really trying to uh, deal with a lot of the really unsexy bits of, um, of the, the adoption of mobile technologies and the integration of it into uh, health systems around the world. And I wanna just go back to some of the things that uh, Labani mentioned um, earlier is that in the design process, it's really important to think about sort of for me, what were four different switch point moments in my career in this space, which has spanned about 13 years. I started looking at the use of mobile phones in Egypt in 2000. Um, is, is really looking at research and really understanding what is the situation on the ground, um, where are people at, participation, really engaging people in the thinking process to identify what are the problems, what are the gaps, what are the solutions, how can they contribute to, um, to those solutions. Really thinking about design um, and, and how do we uh, engage in participatory design processes and bring out of the box design thinking into a lot of the work that we're doing because a lot of these technologies are now starting to break through um, old systems and really transform and disrupt the way that, that we do things and that we look at the world, um, particularly in the health, um, health sector. And then creativity. I think it takes a whole lot of creativity to, uh, to both be opportunistic about what is happening in the space and, and, making, um, and making connections. I love, there's a, a Steve Jobs 
quote that, um, that creativity is just connecting things. And, and, and to me, a lot of the work that the Alliance has been involved in has really been about connecting things, whether it's connecting organizations, connecting ideas, connecting systems, um, and, and sort of bringing things to the fore and mobilizing, uh, mobilizing collective action. So I'll just leave you with those thoughts and, um, and really thank you to, to everyone here at Switchpoint. It's been such an incredible and inspiring uh, experience for me. Thanks.